In this episode, it's all about Microsoft Entra conditional access and specifically what is new and cool. Check it out, you're going to learn something. Greetings everybody, welcome back to the channel, Andy here, so nice to see you, I really do appreciate you dropping by. On today's episode, I thought I'd take a look at conditional access. So Entra IDs, conditional access, it's that whole additional layer of security that is absolutely so important as part of Microsoft's Zero Trust principles. Remember what they are, verify everything, trust nobody, uh, and of course, always use the principle of least privilege, which means give your users what they need, not necessarily what they want. Now, um, I thought I would take a look at conditional access. There's been quite a few changes uh, recently with the addition of templates, as well as some very important man in the middle protection settings uh, that I want to bring to your attention. Now, just to mention, if you want to ask any questions about this or any of my other sessions, of course, just get those comments down below. And if you've not subscribed, bump the subscribe button and that like button. It does make a difference. OK, so uh, I think without any further ado, I think let's jump in and let's check out what's new in conditional access. You enjoy. So conditional access continues to be an important component in Microsoft's zero trust infrastructure uh, and it continues to get improved. Uh, so I'm going to come into protection and I'm going to come into conditional access. And one of the first things that we'll see here is something that's kind of new. The uh, overview page continues to get an upgrade. And what we have, we have something called a policy snapshot. So I can come in and I can click on to a policy snapshot here and I can choose to have a look at this snapshot. So I'm going to click on to this uh, particular policy. <clears throat> I can go in, I can have a look at it. And uh, the nice thing about policy snapshots is, as you can see here, um, it was modified on a particular date. So what does a snapshot mean? Well, if you've ever done file snapshots, for example, in Windows, you know that you can have kind of the last change. So if you want to make changes to a policy, you can roll it back to a previous snapshot. How cool is that? And it's such a powerful feature. And you can also duplicate snapshots as well here. So that's such a nice feature. Uh, and again, a very welcomed feature here. So again, you can see here that we have that policy snapshot. Now, in addition, the overview report shows me how many users that were signed in in the last number of days without any policy coverage. So if you've, if you've created conditional access policies, for example, you might be running these in reporting mode where the policies are actually not taking effect. So it shows you kind of any deficiencies and likewise, any devices. So how many devices or what's the percentage of your devices that are missing out on potentially important uh, security settings? Likewise, we can also do this with applications. Now, in addition, we also get the named locations here as well. So named locations now supports IPv6, of course, and you can see that we have the, a description of various reports. So this new kind of overview page is really, really nice. Now, if I click onto the coverage tab here, you can see the different applications and the percentage of cover coverage uh, that users are not covered. Now, again, in this case, most of my users are not covered because this is just a simple demo account. But here, it would be very useful to know that, oh gosh, only 50% of my users are covered or only 50% of my devices are covered because it helps you enforce conditional access uh, policies stronger. 
In addition, we also have the new monitoring tab, which is currently in preview. And you can see here that we have a number of different filters. So for example, you can filter by authentication strength. You can filter by the number of date ranges, either back to 30 days or the last seven days. And you can also show all. And of course, one of the cool things is you can also reset the filters and you can export any of those settings. And this is quite useful because it gives you, a, you can see exactly what activity, how users are authenticating, what conditional access policies are hitting them and so on. Now, it's really nice to see that you can also create a new policy from here, as well as a policy from template. And again, this is just essentially a shortcut and it will take you there. Now, in addition, um, I'm going to click on to policies. So some of the new policy settings that we've got um, here, I've got a new policy called the CPH policy. I was recently in Copenhagen, you may know. Uh, and so I've basically created a policy here for all my users and I'm targeting a specific resource. So as always, I could do all cloud apps or in this case, just specific apps. And one of the things that's really nice is we can now um, not just do specific kind of Microsoft applications, but we can also do specific portals as well. So I've, uh, I've already got Microsoft 365, but I could require, for example, multi-factor authentication for administrators gaining access to any of the admin portals but also check it out. We can now see, for example, the reporting pages, the identity, the new identity governance features in the compliance center. And again, you've also got, this is Azure Advanced Threat Protection, AKA Microsoft Defender. So not, rather than just all of the admin portals, you, you're going to start seeing individual admin portals coming in in the next few weeks. So that's really, really interesting. So in this example, you can see that I've got one that says Office 365. And again, I can come into the conditions. The conditions are pretty much the same here. So again, we can establish a, a user risk, for example. So for example, if I say I want a, a user risk of low, so if this is for, let's say my sales staff, I'm going to have a user risk of low, which is important in this demo anyway. Now, um, the next thing then is you can also say uh, what device platform. Now, one of the issues that we currently have in cybersecurity world is a potential um, man in the middle attack. So how can we potentially thwart a man in the middle attack? And essentially, what is a man in the middle attack trying to do? Well, typically, um, they're trying to fish you. Now, uh, hackers will either fish you to obtain your credentials, or what they'll do is use a, a technology that will essentially capture your cookie. That means your authentication cookie and replay it back. So how can we thwart that type of attack? Well, in this case, you can see that I'm gonna choose a Windows device for those specific users and for those users accessing Microsoft 365 or that really important admin portal that I just said. Again, we can set a location. So in this example, I might say, do you want to uh, any location or just trusted locations, for example? Now, in this case, I'm going to leave that. But uh, again, with client apps, one of the things that you want to ensure uh, that in this case, this is just really relating to things like the browser and mobile apps. And you definitely want to disable these older legacy authentication clients. Now, again, if you're still using these, if you're in hybrid, I recommend that's fine. You can keep them, but I would put these on a separate conditional access policy just for improved security. And remember this, uh, what that means is that um, any kind of legacy authentication that doesn't require multi-factor authentication uh, is a potential backdoor. Now, finally, what I want to do is I'm going to come down here 
uh, I'm going to say I'm going to grant access, yes, and I'm going to say, yep, it requires multi-factor authentication. Now, in addition, you've also got these things as well, which again, I've covered in the past. So for example, it requires a password change. Watch out for this one. Um, this is something I'm, I'm not happy with. Um, but you could use this, for example, with the legacy authentication apps feature. That might be quite useful there. Um, so what I'm particularly looking at here is the potential for token replay attacks. And Microsoft have currently released this. Um, this is currently in preview. Uh, require token protection for signed in sessions. Super important, particularly on Windows devices. And this kills dead that adversary in the middle attack. So it prevents the user from replaying that token. Okay, so simply a simple click. And again, you can run it in um, uh, reporting only mode, or of course you can switch the policy on. Um, again, I'm just gonna click on that. And for the demo purposes, I'm just leaving it here. Now, one super important thing that I just mentioned was um, that uh, this user it has a low level priority. Now, something that's just been included in identity protection um, is this. So you can pop here into settings and just again, by a little checkbox, um, allow on-premises password change to reset user risk. Okay, so in other words, it will reset that user risk. And that, again, could potentially flag up an issue uh, with that. On the subject of that, where would that actually come up then? Well, um, we know that we have the password reset feature here. Now, if you have a hybrid uh, environment and you're using premium Azure AD, then I'm sure you're aware that you can write back. So Azure AD Connect or Entra ID Connect, as it's now known, you can now do write back. Of course, you can write back passwords and groups and so on. But the problem is this is now becoming a focal point for hackers. So if a hacker can force a password change, they could potentially reset the target account. So again, that identity protection feature is super important there. So definitely check that out. It's really, really important. Okay. Um, so the, again, a very, very short feature that, uh, just what else have we got here? Well, just to remind you that um, we also have um, authentication strengths, which were in um, preview. These are now fully available. So again, you can go in and actually customize your own authentication strength. So you can basically say, hey, I want to have phishing resistant um, multi-factor authentication where you're actually either using Windows Hello or you're using one of these FIDO keys or smart keys as they're about to be renamed in January. Um, in addition, you can also, of course, do custom controls. So this is particularly useful. There are a number of vendors out there that offer their own security add-ons, for example, or it, you know, third party applications like banking applications that might just require a little bit more. So typically for this, you will need your own custom control and often the vendor will provide this um, in this JSON web token. So basically what all we do here is just literally cut this out and replace this in with the vendors and that will basically create your uh, new custom control and it's super, super useful. Now, just to remind you that if you want any um, logs and view, you know, what's happening with this conditional access policy, you can go into the sign in logs here. And every user that gets signed in, of course, it will generate a log. And particularly, it will show you which conditional access policy is being hit as well as in reporting only mode as well, which again is quite useful for uh, planning, okay?
So there you have it, just a few features and conditional access. Few, but super important. So there you have it, what's new and cool in Microsoft Conditional Access, a super important component of Microsoft Zero Trust model. Now, um, if you're in Oslo this week, I'm gonna be speaking at NIC, the Nordic Infrastructure Conference. And just a reminder that if you're in Amsterdam on uh, between the 27th and the 30th of this month, then I'm gonna be speaking at ESPC, the European SharePoint Conference, and all things Microsoft 365. And it looks like it's gonna be a really cool conference. So I look forward to seeing you there. That's it for today. Any questions and comments, as always, get those down below and I'll see you next time around. You stay safe, thanks. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.